Yo, what's good YouTube? Pat here back with another how to play Epic 7 video and in this one we're going to be talking about arguably one of the most degenerate characters in the entire game and a absolute must pull hero, Landy. As with all of my how to play guides, I'll be going super in depth and covering the character stats, their skills, possible end game equipment builds, as well as some suggestions for who to bring them against and who not to bring them against in World Arena. So with the introduction out of the way, let's move right on to Landy's stats. Landy is an Earth Ranger of the Leo Zodiac symbol, which means she shares a stat line with Yuna as well as Asaria. Taking a look at her stats, she has 1,158 attack, 6,002 health, 112 speed, 553 defense, 23% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, 5% dual attack chance, and no effectiveness or effect resistance. Slightly lower than where I'd like it to be in both the attack and defensive stats, Landy makes up for it by having excellent speed, a decent chunk of critical hit chance to start, and the highest health amongst all rangers in Epic 7. Overall, really good stat line in my opinion. As a bit of trivia before moving on to the skills, in the English dub of Epic 7, Landy is voiced by Erica Luttrell, who you may recognize as Sapphire from Steven Universe, as well as Cheetah from a number of DC Comics video games. In the Japanese dub of Epic 7, however, Landy is voiced by Feiru's Ai, who you may not know as the voice of Hibiki Sakura from How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift, but you may know her, or at least you should know her, as the voice of Jolene Kujo, the newest Jojo from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Stone Ocean, which will be coming out later this year. Landy's S1 is Fire. It has a 1.1x attack multiplier, and she acquires 20 Fighting Spirit, upon use. After attacking a target, she gains 10-15% to 15 combat readiness depending on Malagora, and if the target had a buff on it, the amount of combat readiness and fighting spirit that she gains is doubled. This is a very excellent S1 not only because it has almost a top tier single target damage multiplier, but the fact that it can gain up to 30% combat readiness on it means that your landy will be taking quite a lot of turns on top of doing quite a bit of damage. Landy's S2 passive is the Chief is on the scene. She gains 15-20% to 20 attack, depending on Malagora, after she uses an attack, and this can stack up to 3 times. At the start of a turn, she gains 10 Fighting Spirit for every buff on the enemy team, and if her Fighting Spirit is at 100% at the start of the turn, it will reset her S3 cooldown. She starts the battle with 50% Fighting Spirit. This is a really really insane passive if you remember from the luna video i showed you the chart where you got at over 50 percent health an extra 30 percent attack and you saw how impactful that was this is up to 60 percent extra attack and the only condition is that landy has attacked three times it doesn't matter if they're counters dual attacks or her own turn as long as she is attacked three times you will have an extra 60 percent attack and i will show you that chart on the screen now for your reference. So the first number is 1683. This is Landy's attack with simply an I-90 weapon with nothing else. You can see that she has over 2,000 attack at one stack, over 2,300 at two stacks, and almost 2,700 at three stacks. And the numbers just get higher from there. Most people will have at least 3,000 attack on Landy, which means that after one attack, you have 3,600. After two attacks, you have 4,200. And after three attacks, you will have almost 4,800 attack. So this character is pushing at 3,000 attack with a fully stacked passive, almost what Luna was at having the upper threshold of her attack for the build that I was talking about. 3,000 is basically the floor for this character for many of you that are trying to build her. So once you start looking at the other more extreme numbers, like say 3,600 here, you're looking at over 4,320 attack for one stack, over 5,000 for two stacks, and almost 5,800 for three stacks. So yeah, and just as a fun tidbit, if you go all attack here, 4,375 is the number to hit 7,000 attack. And this is before we even talk about the character having the attack buff. So what this translates to is that Landy is going to do an absolute ton of damage, even with very little attack built into her. This is a really bonkers passive, and I really don't know what they were thinking when they decided that 60% attack was the number that they decided on. 
This is absolutely bonkers. One of the best passives in all of Epic 7. It's what makes Landy so powerful. Landy's S3 is full burst. It has a four to five turn cooldown depending on Molagora and you acquire three souls upon use. It is an AoE attack with a 0.9x attack multiplier. After using the AoE attack, it increases the combat readiness of everyone on your team by 15%, as well as gives all allies a two-turn speed buff. Additionally, if her fighting spirit is 100%, she will consume all fighting spirit to make her S3 penetrate 50% defense. So, we just talked about how the chief is on the scene, gives you 60% extra attack, and now it penetrates up to 50% defense if you have that max fighting spirit. That is very easy to get when you consider that you get the 10 fighting spirit per buff. That means that at zero fighting spirit, the enemy team need only have 10 buffs for you to be able to just let it rip and do it right away. The fact that you're going to start at 50% means that you only need five buffs at the start of the turn. And buffs are pretty much the meta. Almost every team is playing some kind of attack buff and or some kind of barrier so it's super super easy to get this 50 percent defense penetration 0.9x attack is not a lot for an aoe but when it penetrates 50 percent defense of everyone and it has potentially a 60 percent attack increase on top of a potential attack buff this move really hurts this is probably the single best aoe attack in all of epic seven because it is you know usually accompanied by the chief is on the scene passive so yeah this is really really insane so here's what the animation looks like when you do not have 100 fighting spirit and now after a couple of attacks we can get our fighting spirit up to 100 percent and you will see this cinematic which basically is your indicator that this move is doing 50 percent defense penetration she basically summons this gigantic gundam to do a ton of damage to everybody landy's soul burn of course is take an extra turn a character with arguably the best aoe attack in the game that is spammable with the best damage passive in the game of course will get the best soul burn in the game which is an extra turn so at its worst this is going to be essentially you s3 with the non-powered up version into an above average s1 attack to pick off a straggler that also gives you 30 percent combat readiness to boot at its best case scenario if your opponent has 10 or more buffs on their team you can just keep using full burst repeatedly until you run out of souls so this is probably the best soul burn in the game it's between this and specter tenebria extra turns are really broken they're especially broken when they're attached to characters that can do large amounts of damage to multiple members of the enemy team when it comes to Mulligora priorities, you should max S3 full burst first, simply for the cooldown reduction for PvE usage. But really, Landy is, at the time of recording this video, the best damage dealer, in my opinion, in all of Epic 7. And damage dealers really need to be plus 15 to do their job efficiently. So after you get full burst maxed out, I leave it to you to choose between either the S1 or S2 passive. But really, this character should absolutely... 100% unquestionably be plus 15 for every single person that is seriously considering using this character. Landy is probably the most overbuffed hero in Epic 7 history. Her raw damage potential means that she's usually going to be the best option in quite a number of scenarios. There are virtually no game modes, in my opinion, where Landy isn't amazing. She's either the best damage dealer or really close to it in a multitude of game modes including, but not limited to, Automation Tower, Expeditions, Abyss, Arena, World Arena, Guild War, and some challenge quests such as Advent. For such a powerful character that is used in a variety of game modes, I feel like a lot of players are going to want to go with a well-rounded build so that they can get the most out of their landy no matter where they use her, and that's what this first build seeks to do. For an all-rounder build, we want to be on speed immunity. Taking a look at the desired stats, we want 3300 attack or better. I find that most people who build Landy either have 3000 attack or 3500 attack in their builds. I chose 3300 here as a safe middle ground. Use whichever one you can actually hit, whatever works for you as a player. 
we want 1200 defense or better and 14k hp or better by having a bruiser like stat line in terms of bulk we can guarantee that our landy can actually at least take a hit and potentially you know is guaranteed a turn as a result remember the s2 passive will stack up if she lives long enough and will do quite a bit of damage so you don't need to over invest in attack and crit damage for this character to do well bulk is in my opinion the most important stat for speed, I have 200 because this is usually the average that you see most landies at. If you can only get 185, 190, that's fine. And as always, if you can go faster without sacrificing stats, by all means, go for it. For critical hit chance, we're at 100%. I find that this is still difficult to hit even for me on immunity. I use a crit chance necklace to circumvent this, but you know, try and get as close as possible as always to 100% critical hit chance. If you can only get like 93, 95, that's fine. And then we want 250 critical hit damage or better. Again, don't need to hyper over invest in damage at the expense of other stats because of her S2 passive. Taking a look at the right side, we want to be on a crit damage necklace, although you can use a crit chance necklace. I know I personally use a crit chance necklace for all of my landy builds because it helps smooth everything out and it makes everything kind of you know gel. The math works out when I use a crit chance necklace, so if it works for you, by all means, go for it. Same thing with the ring. I use an attack percentage ring, but I know that there are a number of players out there that might have HP percentage bruiser rings that have high attack, crit chance, and crit damage on those. And if those make the stats work for you, by all means, use that health ring. For the boots, we're on speed. And for the artifact, I'm assuming you're on guiding light. Yes, I know guiding light is a limited artifact, but it really, really helps Landy's survivability. It's borderline broken. It makes it so that they can't get to Landy and almost guarantees that she gets a turn. Uh, right off the rip and if it procs throughout the match it basically almost guarantees an extra s3 every time you go into stealth mode so it, it's just the best i think it really is the best option in most scenarios especially for pvp however if you don't have it or you just don't really like the guiding light play style bloodstone is an amazing alternative not only for pvp but pve because it returns a percentage of the damage that landy deals to the person who has the lowest amount of health left on the team you can actually make Landy kind of double as a healer. Her S3 puts out so much damage that Bloodstone will actually heal quite a sizable amount. And this is amazing for players that want to use characters like Troublemaker Crozet with Landy. Or if you want to use her on something like the Hell Raid Dagger Sakar challenges, Bloodstone is invaluable and amazing. If you don't have Guiding Light or Bloodstone, Proof of Valor will work in a pinch or even something like Rosa Hargana if you simply just are a brand new player and don't really have any five star artifacts. Taking a look at the per piece average, we want 13% attack, 12% defense, 13% health, and 13% critical hit chance. Counter set Landy is excellent due to the great amount of combat readiness you're most likely going to get on your S1 if you actually proc the counter. A bulky counter landy was something a lot of people originally didn't see coming, but then it started to become much more the norm. At least until we got Researcher Carrot. A lot of people lately have rethought the way they play landy in the face of Carrot, since countering Carrot's S3 usually means that the, your landy is going to die due to a detonate. And one such way has been for a lot of people to readapt the way they play the speed build. They've basically added more bulk to it, and that is how we arrived at the first build that we talked about. Another such build is one that we'll talk about in the next section. Despite all of this though, counter and even lifesteal I feel like are great options on Landy, especially if you aren't particularly concerned about Carrot or the general loss of stats that you get from the added utility from both of these sets. I personally play counter set as well as my friend Professor Spez, who was kind enough to provide the awesome footage of his Bloodstone counter Landy that you've been watching on your screen. When we take a look at the actual sets, for a counter or lifesteal build, obviously we want to be either on counter immunity or lifesteal immunity. Taking a look at the desired stats, we want 3000 attack or better. This is the lowest I am willing to go for the most part. And then looking at the bulk stats, we want 1200 defense and 15k health. You can use the 1200 defense and 14k health from the first section. I am just giving you what my raw stats look like without imprints that I have personally been using for quite a while now. That's why it is 1200 and 15k. For the speed, you want 170 or better. If you are on lifesteal, it is 
probably advisable to go way faster than this because I am on counter set. 170 is probably a okay because I will be getting 30% combat readiness chunks here and there throughout a fight. For life steal, you probably want to shoot for a little bit higher, like 185 or 190. 100 critical hit chance again, and 250 critical hit damage for the same reasons as the first build. Taking a look at the right side, nothing really here has changed. Crit damage necklace or crit chance necklace. I'm assuming you're on a crit damage necklace though. Attack percentage or HP percentage ring, again, assuming attack percentage, and then speed boot. Again, artifacts have not really changed here for the exact same reasons that we talked about beforehand. Landy does quite a lot of damage regardless of what gear she is on. So all you really need to worry about again is the survivability and then just choose which set along with the desired stat line in order to achieve your desired goals. When we take a look at the average piece, we want 16% health, 12% defense, 13% crit chance. And then in the last slot, you're going to need to fill in the pieces here with either things like speed, attack, or crit damage. For our final build, I guess we have to talk about the hotness that seems to keep popping up in the Emperor and Legend bracket as of late, and that is Clevelandy. This, I feel, is very akin to the Counterlandy when it first came onto the scene. You expect this Landy to be built a certain way, and then suddenly you get into the game, the Landy's first, and then your whole team is basically dead. Trust me, it has happened quite a few times at this point on my RTA grind this season. Remember how when I said in my first How to Play World Arena video that being unpredictable was a good thing? That's essentially what this build is. It's unpredictable and as a result, very powerful as it can win games entirely on its own. I feel like if this build starts to become much more commonplace, it should lose effectiveness, but at the end of the day, I, I don't really know. Landy is so stupidly powerful that she feels like she's going to be great no matter what gear set you put on her at the end of the day. So taking a look at Clevelandy, we want to be on speed immunity, although I guess you could maybe go crit chance if for some reason all you cared about was going first and doing a ton of damage because that's what this you know, build is when we take a look at the desired stats. We want 3600 attack or better, 863 defense, this is literally Landy's base defense with an I-90 body. And the health isn't really much different here. 9,253 health is literally her health with an I-90 helmet and no other health stats. 250 speed or better, obviously, you know, you might even go a little bit lower for higher damage stats if you're only going to pair her with a character like Flan, for example. But I feel like for these people that I keep running into, they seem to have this like 250, 260 speed landy with a lot of damage stats and no actual bulk. So I'm guesstimating that 250 to 255 is probably where you want the character to be speed-wise. 100% critical hit chance, 260 or better critical hit damage. Taking a look at the right side, we want to again be on the crit damage or crit chance necklace, depending on what you're looking for. Since this is more damage oriented, you're probably going to want to go with the crit damage necklace though. For the ring, we want attack percentage because all we care about is damage here. We don't really care about bulk. And then speed boots, obviously, to get the most amount of speed. Artifact has changed a little bit here. Guiding light in case for some reason you do get out sped. Uh, or at least if you proc it, you might guarantee get a second turn on your landy, which could in turn lead to a second S3. And then the standard fair damage increasing artifacts apply here. Symbol of unity, portrait of the saviors. And I guess you could use wall of water, but I've never been a super big fan of that artifact outside of a couple of niche scenarios on a couple of niche characters. I really think that you would want to play one of these artifacts instead. When we take a look at the average piece, we want 20% attack. 13 speed, 13 crit chance, and then either crit damage in the last slot, or in the case of something like your attack ring, you wanna make sure that you have flat attack. Having both attack percentage and flat attack on pieces is how you get very high attack without sacrificing speed on a number of characters. Landy is about as meta as it gets when it comes to a damage dealer, so it should come as no surprise that her teammates are going to be standard meta fair. For damage mitigation sources, you can consider characters like Fallen Cecilia, Troublemaker Crozet, and Adventurer Roz. For Fallen Cecilia, her barriers are amazing in tandem with Guiding Light because your Landy will stay in stealth longer. 
for Troublemaker Crozet. Obviously, he provides you a CR push, a cleanse, and class advantage buffs. And if your Landy is on something like Bloodstone, you will be able to keep him healed up and in tip-top shape to keep that damage mitigation going longer. Adventurer Raz obviously provides a defense buff to the entire team, and his S2 is amazing with Landy. You will get more CR out of your Landy, and you will be able to stack up that S2 passive quite a bit faster. For attack buffers, consider Maid Chloe, Amelia, and something like General Purgus, especially if you're on Guiding Light. Amelia and Maid Chloe really, I don't feel like, need an introduction at this point. They are pretty much the two most broken attack buffers and Soul Weavers in the game. Amelia is of particular note because an Amelia plus Landy, if the Amelia is built fast enough, can cycle Landy through a, quite a number of turns, which allow you to get off quite a number of S3s over the course of a game. If you do not have an answer to a fast Landy plus a fast Amelia, no matter what team you are on, it is pretty much lights out. It is a very degenerate combo in my opinion, and it is why Landy and Amelia are two of the most heavily contested characters in high-end PvP at the moment. Maid Chloe doesn't really need too much more explaining. It's basically an attack buffer with the safety net from a re-raise. And as I just said with General Purgus, Usually, if you're on Guiding Light, people will need to use AoE to get you out of stealth, and that obviously pairs very, very well with General Purgus's S2 passive. The last things to talk about are other damage dealers to draft alongside Landy. She is amazing with either strong neutral picks or characters that are incredibly powerful unless they are focused and answered, those being things like Rem and Spectre Tenebria. Obviously, your opponents will want to get Landy off the board as fast as possible, so they don't take a ton of damage from multiple S3s, but they might not be able to do that based on the composition if you have a character like Rem. Spectre is a generically powerful DPS that is good in a lot of situations and a lot of compositions, and pairs really well with Landy for pretty much the same reason. Landy doesn't have too many bad matchups, which we'll talk about in a second, and neither really does Spectre. And both of them demand an answer each individually, otherwise they'll run over the enemy team. So it gives you quite a lot of firepower and very little options to deal with it, which is why those two are the most highly contested characters, I feel like, in RTA at the moment. Let's talk about matchups for Landy. We'll start with the very few bad matchups first and foremost. The biggest weakness of Landy is red AoE DPSs that are reasonably tanky. And at the moment, there's really only two, and that's Red Charlotte and Researcher Carrot. You could argue Ravi, but she can't counter because of the S3 perk that Landy has where it's unable to be counterattacked on full burst. And her AoE is not consistent, which is why you don't really see her that much at high level play anymore. It's pretty much just Charlotte and Researcher Carrot because they can pop Landy from the get-go if she doesn't have some kind of damage mitigation on her team or she doesn't like get a resist, a lucky resist on a burn or something like that. Those are pretty much her two biggest counters. And then after that, your only real option is to basically AoE cleave her or set up an AoE cleave either through somebody like Basar to get her out of stealth and take all of the buffs and shields and barriers and things off of her or using a character like Pavel that just provides a high amount of damage right off the get-go. So aside from being AoE cleaved uh, when you're behind Guiding Light or having an AoE red DPS, there's very few ways to interact with Landy or she has very bad, very few bad matchups, I should say, in general. So aside from those, go nuts. She's pretty much the most top tier DPS in the game. It's between her and Spectre for the overall best DPS in the game in the current meta. And I don't really see that changing anytime soon. With the release of Bellion this week, Landy is probably going to remain the same. Spectre might take a small hit because she won't be able to use Tehagel's Ancient Book as consistently. Unless Bellion just somehow reaches pre-ban status all the time. But I, I don't really foresee Landy going anywhere anytime soon. She just does way too much damage. She's way too consistent. And has very few flaws in the current meta so what i'm trying to say is pull for landy pull early pull often get extra copies for imprints invest into her dump everything into her because i think it's gonna be quite some time before we see a damage dealer that's on the level of landy and i really do think she's here to stay as one of the premier dps's in epic 7 and that is going to be another how to play in the books landy is super important i really really 
hope that you are able to acquire her. Do not let this banner go by if you do not have her. She is absolutely worth it, and I feel, honestly, she is very essential for every single person who plays this game. No one is more deserving of your Covenant bookmarks, that is for sure. So let me know down in the comments below if there's anything I missed, and let me know if there's somebody that you want me to try to cover in an upcoming how to play video. You should see a playlist on your screen now with the other how to play videos that I have done so far for characters in Epic 7. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a good one now.